Good afternoon. Uh, it is my great pleasure to host this business world interaction with uh, STT GDC India, a data center services company uh, which is serving more than 1,000 customers across all verticals, verticals such as uh, banking and financial services, insurance, public sector units, IT, ITES companies, communication service providers, all segments that are uh, that have got a very high uh, reliance on mission critical infrastructure uh, availability, both IT infrastructure and data infrastructure. Uh, STT GDC India uh, have, was uh, uh, incepted in 2004. Uh, and they have 16 data centers across eight cities in the country. We are talking about data centers at a very, very opportune time. Uh, this being the, uh, we are bang in the midst of the pandemic season. And uh, this is the time when a lot of disruptive changes happened uh, in the country, not only the country, globally across. Uh, which uh, which has affected uh, all areas of life, business, um, uh, industry, economy, uh, the way we live, the way we work, the way we play, the way our uh, children go to school, everything has been impacted. And uh, data center is such a technology that uh, actually has supported uh, the disruptive changes during this time. And uh, uh, companies like STT, GDC India uh, have played a great role, uh, which may not have been visible otherwise uh, during this kind of a disruptive transformation. It is my pleasure to have a very senior executive from STT, GDC India uh, uh, to have with us for this interaction. Um, Mr. Jatinder Singh Pabla, he is the Vice President Sales um, at STT GDC India, uh, mm -hmm. responsible for all of the sales and business activities uh, for the organization in the country. Uh, Jatinder brings with him wealth of experience, uh, 24 years of experience working uh, in various kinds of transformation uh, and leading transformation related uh, activity and projects at companies like uh, uh, Microsoft, Wipro, um, Converges, to, just to name a few. Um, just before joining STT GDC India, uh, Jatinder Singh Pabla was uh, with Microsoft for a period of uh, nearly 13 years, wherein um, his uh, immediate role uh, before he joined this organization was to lead the uh, Office 365 business in India. It is my pleasure to invite uh, Jatinder Singh for this interaction. Jatinder, by the way, also uh, writes and contributes a lot of content on LinkedIn um, on areas like machine learning and uh, analytics, artificial intelligence, hybrid cloud, and various other leading edge digital technology topics, which means that uh, he is at home with these topics. Um, once again, uh, my great pleasure uh, to invite Mr. Jatinder Singh Pabla for this exclusive interaction with BW Business World. Thank you, thanks a lot. Thanks for the introduction and it's my pleasure to be here. I mean, what better context than talking about, uh, you know, the current situation of the pandemic. Uh, we here uh, and all of us have, all, all have also been reading that the COVID pandemic has uh, accelerated the adoption of many technologies. And uh, as I mentioned before, the data center is the center of this. So how do you see the role of the data center in the specific context of the pandemic? Because that's what you would have been busy with, uh, with all your customers, not only getting new customers over uh, who are facing infrastructure problems, but also ensuring that your existing customers are also 
not disturbed because of uh, uh, this uh, new challenge. So what are some of the um, hero stories or the survive and thrive stories, if I may call it, uh, that you have been engaged with, with your customers? Sure, sure. Sure, thank. I think that's a very interesting question and very relevant one. Uh, I think by now all of us uh, agree that this pandemic is here to stay, at least in the near future. And the businesses actually will have to thrive uh, amidst these challenges and uh, threats. Uh, in fact, actually the current situation, uh, this has forced every organization and actually every individual to adopt a digital transformation and make it work. Like, for example, the COVID-19 is pushing more and more organizations to move towards IT infrastructure outsourcing, to build business continuity, to optimize cost. So the, the, the uh, data center sector uh, has become so important for the economy to function that it has been accorded an essential services status for continuity of mission critical services. And then the emphasis on vocal for local, that has further escalated the focus on data localization. So all this actually has completely skyrocketed the demand for data centers in India specifically. And this sector is serving almost as an essential backbone of the new digitally enabled economy, if we can call that. Uh, in India, uh, just to give you some numbers, the co-location market was projected to grow at 23% uh, CAGR over next years. And now we believe that the demand for data center is only likely to further increase. Uh, one, of course, we are we are definitely committed to continue servicing our customer, and we are definitely uh, committed to maintain this leadership position in the market. Uh, so, of course, the uh, pandemic has accelerated the digital transformation and pushed us to ensure that it actually works by increasing the adoption of the services. Uh, regarding Strive and Thrive, I think uh, there are enough immense stories. I can't take specific names. There are non-disclosure agreements there, but there have been examples of survival and thriving still. Now, we know that uh, the pandemic and the subsequent lockdowns, they brought significant restrictions with them, but the businesses had to function without any restrictions in the digital world. In the, the digital world didn't have any restrictions. Uh, the restrictions were already only in the physical world. Uh, there was a sudden surge in the usage of applications and services, and there was a 100% reliance on digital, right? Uh, and it, uh, because there was a 100% reliance on digital infrastructure, there was a requirement that the services are always available without any disruptions. So this sounds very simple, but uh, to implement it was really tough. Organizations, including our vendors, including our partners, customers, us, we had to significantly ramp up on our infrastructure and processes and work consistently to meet increased demands and reliability requirements. Now, meeting these increased demand, reliability requirements in a lockdown world with restrictions, but not easy, but people made it happen. So the employees, our employees, our vendors' employees, our customers' employees, all of them work beyond their normal duties to ensure that the lights are always on and the business is always on. I think that's an amazing survive and thrive story. So it's not a single example. Every day we see examples of striving and thriving, and uh, it all reflects on the fact that there has been no disruption because of COVID. Uh, in the digital world, in the businesses. True. Yeah, I mean, it has to be because, uh, you know, at least uh, as a consumer of, uh, you know, available information, external information, we haven't read about any, you know, Indian bank, uh, you know, uh, with uh, service unavailability during this time. Uh, and on, on the contrary, the use of uh, online payment uh, has only increased during this time. Uh, because of so many people buying stuff online, uh, even groceries. Uh, as well as so we haven't heard uh, even uh, companies in the IT, ITES sector, um, uh, you know, suffering because of, uh, you know, inability to, uh, to uh, you know, for their IT infrastructure and communication infrastructure to yeah. meet the demand. So, so definitely. All I can say is that it takes immense amount of work at the back end to keep yes. this running and make sure that the lights are always on. So those are right. the stories, which obviously will never come outside with the names, but right. uh, they will always be the heroes. Right. So what is the kind of spread that you have within the country for your infrastructure? Yeah. So uh, we are uh, present in eight cities, uh, 16 data centers. So uh, uh, 
So that means uh, if a customer wants to choose a co-location data center, we will probably be in a city which is nearest to them. And these cities include Kolkata, include Ahmedabad, uh, apart from Mumbai, Pune, uh, Chennai, Hyderabad, uh, Delhi, uh, Bangalore. So apart from the normal, uh, ma normal major metros and second and and other cities, it also includes cities like Kolkata and uh, Ahmedabad. So we are present across these eight cities, 16 data centers. Uh, with more than 105 megawatt of IT power capacity. Now, you know that IT power capacity is only a part of the overall capacity. The overall capacity is typically the almost double of the IT power capacity. So the IT power capacity is 105 megawatt for us. And uh, so that is our footprint. We uh, are uh, contributing 33% uh, 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 to the co-location business in India. So we are the market leader with one third market share growing at uh, the industry pace, which is approximately 23% uh, CAGR. And the plan is to double uh, this 105, 105 megawatt to more than 200 megawatt in the next couple of years. Uh, that is the footprint. So uh, significant footprint and uh, committed to maintain that leadership position uh, in the next couple of years. Right. So are you also into the business of uh, managing data centers for other companies? Like, for example, say Bank ABC, uh, their data centers, uh, you take over uh, the, the responsibility of managing it. I mean, either, uh, I mean, one, one model is where you own that data center and that data center is completely dedicated to uh, that bank. Yeah. Or then the, it is the bank's infrastructure, but you are uh, maintaining and running it. I would say 95% of the business is our own data center. Uh, where uh, the space, the floors, even in some cases, the entire building is dedicated to customers. But there are some examples of the other uh, part of the business which you said, where we manage it for our customers. So both businesses are there, but more than 95% of the business is the co-location business where hmm. we build, uh, we maintain, and we, uh, we basically uh, uh, give uh, our customers uh, the space, the facility, power, to run their infrastructure uh, in our data center. So that is the primary business model. But we are open okay. to all business models. Means, uh, nothing is uh, uh, bad. It's just that the business today is uh, more in this fashion. Right. So now, you know, in the in the past three, four years, uh, you know, when we talk about data centers, uh, we also immediately start talking about cloud mm -hmm. because uh, 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 at one point in time, it was a you know data center versus cloud kind of a conversation, and uh, now the conversation is data center and cloud because uh, the walls are uh, uh, have been broken down. Different kinds of cloud uh, models are being adopted. Um, so uh, you know various cloud computing use cases like infrastructure as a service. For some companies, it may be just software as a service, wherein they host their software with a cloud service provider or platform as a service. And then specific use cases like disaster recovery and BCP and some emerging use cases like, uh, which are very uh, heavy on the, on the, uh, the edge of the network, like IOT. So what do you see in the Indian context, which are some of these major drivers? And when, when I talk about the drivers, obviously the driver, uh, would have a technical uh, case for it as well as a business case for it. So could you just take us in terms of what are customers buying from you? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And uh, there are multiple uh, drivers for data center business in India. And that is the beauty of uh, this business. And that is why we are so bullish about uh, the business in India. It's not a single driver. There are multiple drivers which are contributing to the growth. Now, uh, let me just talk about maybe top four or five. The first uh, cloud is a definite, definite driver for uh, even the co-location service in India and also the data center service. The cloud itself is growing at 33% uh, CAGR in India, uh, which is okay. driving hyperscale growth. And the, this cloud growth is actually high across uh, IAS, PaaS, SaaS, and this will continue to accelerate. Uh, in fact, the work from home uh, culture uh, has further accelerated the usage of cloud services, including user productivity, uh, business application. So cloud is a definite, definite uh, driver and uh, uh, which is helping even the data center industry and the co-location industry. To grow. Second, uh, even the enterprises are increasingly outsourcing their IT infra to data center players beyond cloud as well. 
to leverage cost optimization, to leverage reliability, and now even more to uh, leverage business continuity. And they are leveraging cloud services as well. So both cloud. So when the enterprises are outsourcing, some of them are choosing cloud, some of them are using uh, choosing uh, co-location uh, co-location model, and some of them are choosing both. And uh, uh, both of these are driving uh, uh, co-location business in India. Uh, there are many other uh, drivers as well, and equally strong. For example, the BFSI, telco, e-commerce. So these players are setting up their DCs and DRs in India. There are local data regulatory requirements like RBS guidelines. There are latency requirements, and all these are driving new and existing players to set up their infrastructure in India and expand it. Fourth, I think all of us are aware, the internet and network boom uh, that is uh, uh, pushing more and more telcos, OTTs, CDNs, and e-commerce companies to set up and expand their infrastructure in India, and they are leveraging uh, co-location facilities for this. And lastly, uh, I think the new generation or the new type of uh, the new new gen uh, use cases applications like IoT, AI, ML, they are continuing to proliferate, and data centers uh, are, are being leveraged for that. Specifically, the edge uh, edge is uh, intending or uh, edge is actually uh, pushing the workloads uh, out of the centralized uh, cloud or centralized right. data centers and closer to clients, prevent delays. Uh, and to, uh, to improve the application uh, performance. And co-location facilities uh, have a better chance of being closer to customers uh, because they can build multiple, uh, multiple, multiple facilities and smaller facilities which are near to customers to provide reliable and scalable data services. So there are multiple uh, drivers and demand for data centers uh, is uh, actually going to increase uh, because of all these drivers. Uh, not a single, uh, multiple, and uh, that uh, that's a good news for, uh, for for us to be in the business right now. So this uh, uh, the business uh, segment that you are in, which is uh, the data center business. Uh, it's a it's it's a very uh, it's a very competitive uh, segment in the country. So what would you say are the key differentiators of STT GDC in the data center space? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, let me be careful and yet <laughs> explain the differences. Uh, now, one, as I have uh, said earlier, that we are the market leader and we are the leading data center operator in India. Uh, we run 16 data centers across eight cities in India uh, with almost 105 plus megawatt, which is going to double in the next few years. Uh, beyond India as well, uh, we are present in uh, at least five countries. We have more than 90 data centers. Uh, and uh, hundreds of megawatt, so which uh, brings a global expertise also into the picture. Uh, we are the only operator that offers our customers an option of selecting sites which are matching their strategic and closest locations while lowering their total cost of ownership. So uh, such a large scale, multiple sites, global expertise, being closest to the customer is something which is a definite, definite USP for us. Uh, Customers also benefit from our economy of scale. Uh, we bring such a large footprint, uh, and uh, uh, they also benefit by riding on our growth plans and reducing their capex. For example, when we are uh, going from 105 megawatt to uh, 200, uh, uh, more than 200 megawatt, all this capacity is available to our customers on consumption basis, which reduces their capex uh, to uh, capex requirement uh, for our end customers. So this means the capacity is available when the customer needs it without waiting for multiple years of build cycle. And because we are growing at such a high pace, such uh, such, such uh, we are investing so much into the market that uh, definitely brings uh, brings a USP uh, USP with respect to STT GDC India uh, for our customers. I think beyond that, we are a very very financially stable and profitable organization. Uh, it is very important for a co-location service provider to be financially financially strong uh, because only then it will be able to pay their own AEMs. Uh, to and we will be able to guarantee service levels and we will be able to safeguard customers interest. So we take pride in saying that we are a very, very financially stable and profitable organization. And lastly, I think uh, as you uh, have said that we are present in India since decades, at least since 2004, uh, we are doing this data center business. Uh, we are trusted actually, we are at the trusted partners, uh, providers uh, for mission critical uh, services of some of the top companies which are offering cloud, social media, OTT, financial services. And over these uh, uh, almost two decades of services, we have 
built extensive number of checks measures uh, redundancies and uh, that has ensured that we are able to provide almost a 100% guaranteed uptime so all these best practices that are built over 14 years are offered to our customers as part of our services so all these things if, you, if i have to just uh, summarize uh, uh, the scale being financially stable profitable organization decades of services uh, experience which is uh, reflecting in our design and operational experiences and a very very high growth plan uh, which can help our customers reduce their capex requirement i think that is our usp which we need okay <clears throat> so apart from the regular uh, you know uh, say workload processing kind of uh, use cases what are some of the uh, you know additional technical capabilities if i may use that word i will i'll i'll explain what i mean by that like for example um organizations wanting say software defined vans uh which is a specific infrastructure requirement so uh, do you all provide those kind of infrastructure capabilities also uh so we are primarily a pure colocation player and we do that well uh, that is our strength uh and uh, we are sticking to it as of now uh so if the, for anything else what we do is that we partner with uh, other 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 organization for example when it comes to us van or when it comes to even uh, managed hosting or cloud services there are partners which help us bring those services to our customers so if you ask me uh, specifically that do i offer network services the answer is no but if you ask me that uh, do i provide solution for uh, network services i would say yes because that is where my partners come in coming to picture so there are more than 50 partners uh, right from cloud to networking to managed hosting to managed services uh and and whatever you uh, whatever requirements of a customer have including the uh, business continuity including disaster recovery uh, storage seating so whatever requirements of a customer have uh, there would be a partner for that and uh, ultimately the customer would get uh, an end to end solution from either us or from our partner okay so next i wanted to ask was that you know from a customer's point of view um how should the customer or how would the customer make the decision of using a data center service provider like stt gdc versus so many public cloud options like aws and azure and many other vendor centric data centers like you know ibm has got so many data centers in the country and oracle has got so many data centers in the country um so how 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 does the customer make this decision what is your advice in terms of how does he do the weigh the pros and cons of each yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, it's a it's a very interesting thing i think for almost uh, 13 years in microsoft i was selling public cloud and <laughs> now i am selling uh, uh, uh colo so the questions relate to both of them and i have some some expertise on it uh first uh, it's not either public cloud or colocate colocation it's never going to be that it is always as you you also said it is always going to be public cloud and colocation now enterprises are looking to outsource their it infrastructure and the factors are same the factors are tco reliability business continuity uh, their outsourcing plan actually leverages the best of both worlds based on the demands of the application so for example applications like user productivity collaboration are well proven uh, to work in cloud model but there are applications that that are not well suited for cloud as well and the reasons could be latency the reasons could be performance uh, issues the, the reasons could also be geographical issues so maybe an application not based in india it is well outside of india while the customer wants the application to be in india or there is a specific latency requirement and the customer wants the application to be uh, maybe within next uh, within 50 km or 100 km while the cloud provider has a region which is maybe 1000 km so there are multiple reasons because of which uh there are scenarios where uh, uh the cloud might not be best suited and it will always keep on changing so enterprises are going to continue to leverage both public cloud and cloud location services to meet their it infrastructure outsourcing requirements uh, so that uh, the projection is that uh, both of them are going to grow almost at the same same pace so if you see cloud is going at 33% and uh, cloud is going at 23% 
So the growth is there in both. So customers are going to choose both depending upon the requirement of the, of the application. Now, second, another interesting point is that, uh, uh, specifically in India, uh, many of the hyperscalers and vendor centric DCs, they leverage colo players to build and expand their infrastructure. So it's a collaboration model rather than a competition model. So when cloud grows at 33%, when customers choose a cloud at some level, it is also impacting colo players and uh, helping them to grow at 23% CAGR. So uh, 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 I think uh, uh, it is going to be both the world and whichever world uh, it is, ultimately it is going to help uh, the data center industry at the end. So I don't think there is any reason for at least the data center players to worry about this trend uh, as long as the customers continue to outsource their ID infrastructure. Okay. So the current China boycott, uh, is it an advantage for you? Uh, it's a very sensitive topic. Uh, uh, I won't say, I don't think uh, anything is advantages or disadvantages. And uh, I'm sure that when government takes a decision, there are, there are multiple reasons for that. Uh, so it's very difficult to say uh, whether it is it will be of advantage or whether it will be of disadvantage. Uh, uh, I think uh, it's the fact that whatever government uh, does, it will be for the betterment of the country and we'll have to abide by those real rules. So when it comes to business, uh, I don't think we can take a side <laughs> whether the decisions are good or bad. Right. But to say that uh, the government has taken the right decision and uh, continue to comply with that. Okay. So any final uh, specific messages that you would like to give out? Uh, so obviously this this won't appear as a as a question. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I think uh, uh, the only message which uh, I would want to give up is that uh, uh, this is probably the most uh, interesting time to be in this industry. Uh, one, there is demand. Uh, there is demand from cloud world. There is demand from polo world. There is growth in the industry. Uh, second, there is investment in the industry because when there is a demand, there are investments which uh, keep uh, keep coming both from the industry as well as from government. Also. So there are policies which are which are getting more and more, uh, I would say, uh, conducive towards conducting data center business. And uh, uh, the forecast for this industry is very strong, uh, with or without COVID, even with the unfortunate uh, situation of COVID. The forecast for this industry is uh, is still strong for the next four to five years and the industry will continue to grow at 24 to 25 percent. So one, I think this is, uh, uh, this is, uh, it's a very, very, uh, uh, it's a very strong phase of data center growth in India. And second uh, is that uh, with the, all this current uh, pandemic situation, uh, I think it's very clear that uh, the data center industry is the, is one of the essential services industry in this country and it is the backbone of the digital infrastructure. So apart from uh, the business side, it is also a, a moment and a matter of pride for us that uh, we are keeping the lights on for the businesses and we are ensuring that people continue to work 24 by 7 and as per their requirement and all the transactions happen, uh, people get people remain entertained in their home and uh, uh, with the 100% uptime. So I think both from the business side as well as from uh, the uh, the uh, relevance side, uh, I think the uh, data center industry is uh, in the right, right spot right Thank you. It was a pleasure speaking with you, Jatinder. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.